Hello, I'm Dr. Carl, and today I wanted to discuss a number of articles that we've seen in the past week or so addressing angry young men. And I want to pose the question, can we finally start talking about men? My whole life, I have genuinely believed in equality. Indeed, the first thing I ever really rebelled against in my life when I was 11 years old I took legal action against my school on the ground of sex discrimination against boys. And for the record, the investigation proved that I was right. And at the time, this is like late 80s, believe me when I tell you, I actually adored feminism. I thought feminism was the way to go. If there was one aspect of conservative thinking that I really didn't like, it was emphasis on traditional gender roles. I mean, sure, it's great for a woman to be a housewife and a stay-at-home mother, but it's also great for a woman to be able to have a career or to run for and hold public office. Likewise, yeah, it's great for a man to have a career, be a breadwinner, and run for and hold public office. But it's also great for a man to have a chance to be a stay-at-home father, house husband, while his wife earns the family's money. Likewise, well, yeah, it's great for men to court women, ask women out, ask women to marry them. It's also great for women to do all that as well. I mean, I remember seeing a while ago there were actually male engagement rings that women could buy to ask their boyfriends to marry them. This is great. I mean, we should have equality. And I thought for sure equality would include equality for men. And already at a young age, I noticed a lot of ways in which men face discrimination. The biggest of which, back in those days, nearly every country in Europe and nearly every country in Latin America had a military service requirement for men. None had one for women. Thankfully, that has changed quite a bit since then, but there are still countries in both places where that remains the case to this day. But <clears throat> much to my disgust, when listening to feminists, I thought I would hear all kinds of wonderful things about equality. Instead, what I heard was sick misandry. And whenever I tried to point this out, sort of a, hey, you know, that, that comment was a bit much, you know, I, I want to see a man beaten to a bloody pulp with a high-heeled shoe stuffed in his mouth, like the apple in the mouth of a pig kind of comments. I thought for sure any feminist I talked to would say, oh, look, that's just some nuts we have in our movement. And I would say, or I thought I was going to say, oh, yeah, I get it. I mean, every movement has crazies. Sure, I'm not going to judge you based on your crazies. Instead, what I got was excuses. They, they tried to make excuses and, and defend the comments. Worse yet, I even got justifications of, well, men needed to know what sexism felt like, or they were just trying to provoke discussion, or that, that kind of talk. They didn't say this, but in essence the argument was, yeah, it's rough and drastic, but it serves a purpose. No, that's just sexism. That's misandry. And that is the antithesis of equality. And to address the point that men don't know what sexism feels like, well, I mean, I just mentioned a huge example, sexist military service obligations. I mean, and there are others. Some countries have a higher retirement age for men, even though men die younger. Someone actually said to me once, well, that's a matter of opinion as to whether that's sexism. No, that is blatant sexism, and there's no way to justify that whatsoever. Now, I've been active in the men's rights movement for a little over a decade now, and I've long learned to brace for impact, so to speak, anytime I try to mention men's issues. But it still does not cease to disgust and, and amaze me in a bad way. The hostility, the defensiveness, if I just mention the term men's issues, or even something specific to men, like, well, for example, Boys uh, falling behind academically, which is a huge issue. That's not even men, that's boys. And that's not necessarily attacking anyone. I just say, hey, you know, boys are falling behind academically. Let's do something about it. Here comes this defensiveness. And as a result, many men have become disgusted. Many men have come to believe that women really don't love men much. And as a result, many men have stopped speaking up. And then the same uh, people say that men's problem is that they don't speak up. But don't they realize that whenever men do speak up, we get this hostile, angry reaction? 
And what's so upsetting to me is that for a fraction of the energy it has taken to fight us, we could have actually addressed and largely solved most of these issues facing men. And you know, at the time, as far as I was concerned, if this had happened years ago, feminists could have put their own spin on it, and they could have even taken all the credit. Wouldn't have necessarily agreed with that, but I would have been so thrilled that men's issues were finally being addressed and would have been largely solved. That I would have been more than happy to let them have all the credit. And you know what? They actually would have deserved a lot of credit. Instead, they have wasted so much energy fighting us. And then they turn around and beg for us to understand that, no, we, we love men. Well, I mean, if you're going to argue against any time a man tries to call out sexist misandry or point out things that are unfair to men in this world, you're wasting your breath trying to say, but we love men. So can we finally talk about men? We finally realize that there are things in this world that uniquely or disproportionately affect men, that there's such a thing as sexism against men, that it's just as wrong as to who had it worse you're asking the wrong question. This isn't a competition to see who had it worse. So I'm asking all of you out there who are writing articles and making comments about angry men, well, can you finally put down your defensiveness and just listen and understand their issues that affect men? And the good news is they could actually be pretty quickly solved if you would just let us do it. I also urge all of you to watch The Red Pill if you haven't already. I'm Dr. Carl. Enjoy.